For this second episode, I had the crazy idea of recreating the first home video game controller. Okay, so basically I wanted to see how bad it was compared to modern day controllers. Wait, can I just buy this on eBay and relive the glory that way? Well, I could if I wanted to spend anywhere from 350 to 525 dollars. But wait, reported working 15 years ago, unable to verify working condition. Well, cool, let me up my bid. So, forget that. I designed my own, printed it out on my 3D printer, and then used an Arduino to play Pong with it. All for way less than $350. That's what you signed up for? Stick around. If not... Cool, you're still here. Let's take a brief look at what the first home video gaming system was. The first home gaming system was the Magnavox Odyssey, released in the U.S. in 1972. In my research, I came across this gem of a commercial. Magnavox presents Odyssey, the electronic game of the future. Odyssey easily attaches to any brand TV, black and white or color, to create a closed-circuit electronic playground. Odyssey gives you all the exciting action of hockey and 11 other challenging play and learning games for the entire family. Odyssey, a new dimension for your television. Now at your Magnavox dealer. He's listed in the yellow pages. Wait, full stop. Paper displays that you taped onto the TV? Okay, wow, I'm not even going to get into that. Since I'm mostly interested in how the controller feels and plays, let's talk about its design. The controller itself was fairly simple to recreate using reference pictures I found on the internet. The trick was making it actually function so I could play a game with it. I found this do-it-yourself project where James Bruce recreates Pong using an Arduino. He outlines all the steps needed to do this, which is great. However, you end up with a pretty crude looking final product, which is why I wanted to recreate the actual controller itself. Now Pong wasn't played on the Odyssey, but there was a table tennis game that served as inspiration for Pong. In addition to Odyssey table tennis, that's close enough for me. Let's take a look at how I designed my version of the controller. As I mentioned earlier, I used pictures and video from the inner tubes to recreate the form factor of the original controller. As James outlined, I included a single potentiometer that serves as the control input to the Arduino. And no, this controller does not reproduce all the functionality of the original one because the Arduino script wasn't set up to include all those inputs. If somebody wants to modify that Arduino script, I'll gladly do a respin of this to include those inputs. Then I printed the controller out on my Lulzbot Taz6 3D printer. If you're, for whatever reason, also interested in this, links to the STL files are in the video description. Once it was printed, there was a little bit of assembly to do. Finally, I wired it all up and got it running with the Arduino. All right, so you can see we got everything hooked up. The game's running. The uh, potentiometer is controlling the vertical paddle, and uh, whew, this is some um, thrilling gameplay here. But um, the original controller basically had, you know, this knob would control the vertical direction. This would move it in the horizontal direction. There's a reset button, and then there's this little sub knob which would act as an English control. And um, so this is the the original speed the Arduino game is set at. So um, let's crank that up and see if we can improve the gameplay uh, that way. All right, so you can see that I've, I've increased the speed by a factor of five. Um, so that makes the gameplay, you know, a little bit more interesting. Um, I was also worried that the potentiometer I picked was going to be too, you know, sticky, um, but it's very responsive, so that's great. Um, you know, so this makes me think I could play this game for you know, a couple of minutes at most. <laughs> So overall, you know, it's really interesting to hold, feel, and play with, you know, the first home gaming controller. They didn't have a lot to base it on, so, you know, it's just really interesting to see what the first design was and, and how that came out and how it actually plays. Um, it does really make me appreciate a modern controller and the ergonomics and especially the D-pad, kind of, you know, what a leap forward that was and how much more it improved gameplay. One final observation on the design of this. The Odyssey controller has the horizontal and vertical controls at opposite ends of the controller. This means you need both hands just in order to operate those two controls. On a modern controller, the D-pad allows you to operate these two controls with your thumb only. This frees up your other hand and fingers 
to interact with all the other controls. Man, what an improvement that is, and it really shows you how much controllers have evolved. That's it for this episode of Old and New. Hopefully you enjoyed this look at using 3D printing to approximate an ancient technology. Since you're still here, you might like the first episode of Old and New, where I look at how an Etch-a-Sketch works and I design a more modern version. Click here to check that out. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see the next episode, and if not, finally, if you want to take an inside look at my upcoming projects, please take a look at my Patreon page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.